All righty. Whew. There we go. Hello again, everyone. What's happening? I have notifications. All right. Oh, I forgot to post to Fostodon, I think. Oh, no, no, I didn't. We're good. We're good. Cool. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Josh. I'm a full-time open source developer, and I stream on Twitch twice a week. Got stream elements set up. And I'm ready to go. So first thing I always do is on my Twitter and Fostodon, I start threads of what I'm going to be doing today. So ooh, I see a few people just joined. Thank you very much. Um, I actually lied a little bit. I will be working on my personal site. <laughs> but first, I've got a few uh, GitHub notifications that I've got to get through. So um, first off, Brittany, hi. Welcome. Ooh, proven run. How you doing? Hi, Seabird again. Nice to see you. Sorry, I lied. Going to work through some GitHub notifications first. I'll probably get to the personal site in about an hour or in like 45 to 60 minutes. First up, reviewing a PR from. Uh oh, <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't be upset, Elian, if you if you left uh, and then came back. The personal site's actually going really well. Um, I set it up on Vercel, um, and for those who are curious, here's the the repo and and deploy link. So I'm really pleased about this, uh, which is also an answer to how I'm doing. I'm very pleased. Um, I I decided. I, I'm gonna eventually make like a good solution for this squiggle underline. Eventually it'll be something else, but. Open source, snap. Yeah, I did make progress. I'm really, really proud of it. I'm much faster when I'm off stream. I'm still, I'm still not like as proficient, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm gonna review some open source stuff first because I, I should be going through my open source backlog. Like this is what I actually do. The content creation and streaming is secondary. So first up is Joel, who I actually met at Prisma Day um, in over the past summer, almost a year ago now. And Jogi42, great person, uh, TypeScript dev developer at Prisma. Highly recommend y'all follow this, this individual from Joel. 42. Okay, let me just actually post that on the chat. Great question. Let me just uh, post that in the chat as well. And the PR link. So I have this extension that I eventually I'm going to start marketing out. It's called Refine to Save Replies. Um, my Chrome browser extension that augments GitHub's saved replies. It's a browser extension. Um, let me post that here. So, ugh, the tweets text limit is always annoying. First. Yeah, cool. Anyway, so, um, one of the issues that I have with um, GitHub save replies feature is that A, almost no one knows that this thing exists. Um, so like in, in, where is it? Oh my God, there it is, add save reply. So um, there's, no one knows about this because like they haven't announced any changes to it to my knowledge since like 2016. If you go to GitHub save replies, you can save replies to your account and then paste, like basically copy and paste them into pull requests or issues, this little field there. Um, so like if I wanted to like my duplicate one, duplicate of whatever, 
then like it's just copy and paste it. But I want to be able to, in a repo, define like a replies.yaml file that, um, oh, where is it? There we go. That defines things for me, like a bunch of save replies. Like I might want to have a clearly duplicate issue save reply with this template. And then I want to be able to also put in like little handlebars templates of like user.login referring to the user who posted it. And that's what this browser extension does. Unfortunately, I haven't actually used it in a little while, so I don't know. Well, it seems to kind of be working. Hello world, exclamation mark, smiley. So I go to find save replies. Come on, VS code, load. All right. And, oh, I have some local changes. I don't know why, I haven't used this here in a while. So right now, refine save replies only works on issues, but in theory, I also wanted it to work on um, pull requests. So that's what this PR adds. So it says, by the way, if y'all haven't worked in Chrome extensions before, this is how they work. You go to manifest.json, and that describes the metadata, the manifest data for the extension. I might be using an old version, I don't know. Um, you say which page matches, like github.com slash anything, anything issues, loads which scripts, and here we're saying this PR, PR checkout 147, Install and I am pmpm. Is this lock? Oh my god, it's still on yarn. Haha, <laughs> yarn. This predates my moving everything to pmpm. All right. Um, so yeah, now we also work on pull requests. And you know what? See, but I appreciate the, the suggestion, but I'm going to say let's make a new issue for that. Technically, drop down is on its own and noun. Like, eh. Eh, interesting idea. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Um, and here's an interesting one. So in the, thank you for commenting by the way. I really appreciate it. In the code, ooh, that's too zoomed in. Um, this on open save replies button click, um, that's an event listener added to the open save replies button. And hey, um, what this does is we um, create a new div. I have yet this little create element helper here. What does that even do? Creates an element and then adds a bunch of attributes to it. Cool. Document.create element, element.append children if they exist, set the class name, otherwise set attributes. All right. Um, we create a div with the div with the span. So we're basically copying how GitHub's replies work. Ah, here we go. Repository replies. Here we go. Uh, clearly duplicate issue. This, by the way, is one of my favorite little memes and I never use it because I always feel bad. Why not use article instead? You know what? That's a great question for the GitHub folks. I, <laughs> I am just going off of the HTML, yeesh, whoa, dev tools, uh, the HTML uh, layout that they do. So they've got this like um, weird hodgepodge of like web components and a bunch of divs and spans. So like in theory, I agree, they should definitely use semantic HTML. In practice, I'm not familiar and I'm copying exactly what they do so that if they ever make style updates, it, it doesn't break my stuff. Great question, love to hear it. Um, awesome, so in order to build and test this locally, I believe there was a build script, yep. Yarn build watch, I think it was. Yep. Yarn build. Yarn build watch. <laughs> yeah, so Matic HTML is great until you interact with someone who doesn't use it and you have to add things to their things. Oh, well. And in, let's see. So just confirming, right now I've got the extension loaded. Uh, refine save replies. Yep, not to be confused with refined GitHub. And if I go to the pull request, I wonder the root. Here we go. Ooh, yet to learn Git. That's an exciting time. Git is great. Thank you. 
I appreciate the smiley, by the way. Smileys make the world go round. Yeah, so right now there's no repository replies in the PR, but there is in the issue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Chrome extensions. Are you going to learn Git anytime soon? Do you have plans? I'm going to remove this one. Load unpacked. Go to repos. Refine save replies. What is this? I forget where it is. Extension loaded. Okay, there we go. And if I refresh. And voila, repository replies. It works. Yay. Yeah, Git seems scary. I think it seems scarier than it should, but it's not a, the first thing I would teach someone. Oh, mosh git, what is this? Mosh git course. Ooh. Ooh. It's a nice website. Nope. That ah, looks good. Cool. Well, good luck. Let me know how that goes. Hope it goes well. I'll say that the, the foundations of Git, like the basics, a lot of people get pretty well. It's when you tar start to do the more like complex edge casey stuff or like mess up and use a command by accident and then break something that it can be a little more tricky to debug. But the nice thing is there are a few tricks that like get reset hard, like just completely wipe your states and undo all the mess ups. So that's nice. Awesome. Tried this out locally. Yeah. Repays versus merge. Not going to go into that. I always merge YOLO. Awesome, trying this out locally and it works great. Nice to see it's such a small, such a, I don't want to say small, such a targeted change. Thanks, Joel. Great first PR in this repo. Um, also pointing out, fun fact, you can use CSS selectors that are more than just, or more complex than just source equals this source. You can say source must start with. And yeah, context equals, I'm guessing that works for issue and PR. Actually, let me, let me verify that here. If I inspect, what was the, it goes, details menu. So I want to search for a details menu. And oh God, a lot of detail menus on the page. Here we go. Source equals settings, replies, context equals issue. Oh, this is the issue. And before I approve, I just want to make sure that that change is necessary. So if I inspect details, details menu, source equals, replies, context equals, pull request comment. Cool. So now we allow any source with settings, replies, context equals as the start. Awesome. I've started putting like little indicators of like section or type of comment, like praise or naming or whatnot. Uh, I'll just respond here. Thanks, Seabed. I tr personally, I try to keep PRs granular and put unrelated changes in their own issue. I think just drop down here is fine. It's a common term. The in my, in my understanding, but I appreciate the help. Thanks. All right, approving the PR and merging it. Woo, yay. <gasps> Joel, are you here? Joel, am I, I feel like I'm saying the hard J when it should be a soft. I apologize if so. Um, Moving on, I should um, should build this. Get check out main, get pull, yarn, yarn build. I don't have like automated publishing to the Chrome Web Store. Yay! Uh, yet, so I don't even remember how to <laughs> get this thing merged. Is there a development.md? I building, using local build, publishing. Okay. Oh, yarn zip. Jesus, is that it? 
yarn build, yarn zip. All right. And Chrome Dev Console, sure hope I don't leak my passwords. Uh, you know, on instinct, I almost just clicked show password right there, but I knew. I knew. All right. Uh, upload that file. How do I upload a new file? Category tools, build package, upload new package. Here we go. All right, repos, where is it? Uh, refined, save replies. Ah, it did make this. Name. Created October 20th. That seems wrong. Let's just delete that. Yarn zip. Why does it say created? Ah, oh, created today. Oh, it must have been a file that I last created October and the zip command updated it. Did this, Elian, did my, oh, my stream manager says it's not frozen? You're, you're freaking me out here. Do you need a refresh? You're, you're scaring me, my heart, my poor little heart. Oh, thank her. Hey, Sabrina. I'm good. Thank you, Kirby Jones. I am good. Invalid version number. Oh, I need to bump to a bigger manifest. I don't want, I don't want anyone to be frozen, but I'm glad it's only one person. Sorry. <laughs> Hola. Como esta? I don't speak Spanish, but I, I remember a little bit from my half year in junior high. Ryan, I was wondering who was doing the shout out. Good to see you. Version 8.3, push, yarn zip. All right, I'm just gonna, just in case, I'm gonna remove the existing zip file and make a new one. Find save, but why is it not, why is it gray? Open. For issues and pull requests. Issue or pull request. Save draft. Oh, you know what? I forgot to check whether the updates the docs. For any issues or pull requests. Whoops. That's okay. Get add all, get commit, docs, little addition. You're out of the loop, what's the project? Great question. I'm, I think I'm about to finish it. So I'll just wrap up with a summary and I'll post it in the chat. Thanks for asking. I appreciate you. Uh, the project is Refine Save Replies. It's an extension that adds replies from a replies.yaml file that you can check into a repo to the save replies that you can respond to things with. Um, hey, he's here. So Yoel is someone I met who works at Prisma, who's an awesome person, um, added the ability for it to work on pull requests, previously only worked on issues. But fun fact, GitHub has this little save replies thing where you can save replies to your accounts and this adds support so that you can load things in from a repo. Awesome. Um, so that's that. <laughs> um, oh wait, I should submit for a review. I don't want to opt into Google Analytics, uh, but it's submitted for review, all right. And this will take one to 20 days or whatever. This is not for the Esther project, sorry. I'm gonna, I'll switch to the project. You know what, I wanna, I'll do, the problem is I got a bunch of issues to, to tackle. Um, tell you what, I'll do one more, one more thing that's not the Astro project and then I'll switch to that because I don't wanna be slacking on my, my duties. Yeah, fun fact about GitHub save replies. I'll, I'll post this again. Um, it's just, they haven't done much with it since like 2016 or something. It's, it's been a while. When did they announce it? Eh, I don't remember. Can't find it. Anyway, so this, this is actually a good segue. I have this template TypeScript node package, um, which is a quick start friendly TypeScript template with a whole bunch of stuff built in. And I'm starting to roll it out across all my personal repos. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Cool. Um, it's got stuff like all contributors, which tracks 
people who contribute in ESLint and NIP, which is this awesome new tool that detects unused file dependencies and code exports. Um, and honestly, I think it's a good place to to get a first pull request in if you're if you're looking to contribute to something. Um, and this nice individual called Navin Morphy, pardon me if I mispronounced, is um, is interested in sprucifying up, making more snazzy, um, this the setup script. So I'm going to go to that. So in this repo, um, I'm just going to get pull, npm install, clear. There's a setup script. Oops. Skip API. That lets you set up a local repo and it like does a whole bunch of stuff to, to set up that repo locally. Like it um, modifies your readme to be the name and title and organization and stuff that you specify. It um, clears the all contributors list. So it's not the giant list of contributors to the template. Um, so the setup script is really useful because fun fact in public GitHub templates, if you click use the template, it literally just forks the repo. It doesn't change it at all. So you use this and you get the same readme, the same set of scripts, everything. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And the setup script in particular, I'm excited about because it's a really nice setup experience that prompts people for things. Uh, so I'm going to review this pull request that now being next up. Last thing before my personal site reviewing. I think they're on Twitter. I like to always give credit, like public shout outs to people because I think that's the right thing to do. Not in underscore Morphe. My template type script. Updates from Tim Abbey's PR. Yep, they did. All right, so what they did is um, they added spinner support. So I'm using this really cool um, interactive CLI builder called Clack, which I'll post in the chat. Faux shizzle. Uh, it's, the site is very straightforward, but basically if you looked at the CLI that I ran, have I tinkered with the repo for GitHub for the repo for Twitter's algorithm? No, I haven't. I, I've seen a couple tweets about it, and <laughs> that's that's about it. Uh, have you? Any? Have you found any juicy tidbits? I saw someone complaining that Elon Musk is like a whole other segment of user. I thought that was funny. Mm -mm. I don't plan on it. Things are things are too filled with drama these days. I need to get my work done. I'm relying on people like you in the chat to tell me what's happening with the Twitter uh, algorithm and whatnot. But yeah, so if I get add all, get reset, hard head, PM, PM install, PM, PM run setup, skip API, so I just reset everything. Oh my God, thank you. No one has ever commented on this. I have a skull glass that I got once for a Halloween party and a flamingo uh, water pitcher. Always stay hydrated. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this shell. This is great. Clack is... Someone tell me, is Clack inspired or written by the Astro people? What is the relationship with with Clack and Astro? Am I misremembering something? I mean, that's just a beautiful UI there. Okay, so that is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's from Nate. Ooh, Nate's on Foster now. Astro Build co-creator. Yep, there we go. Awesome. Very cool. Um, don't think it so one thing is they changed something from gray to yellow. Should be yellow though. Since it's not always a problem, I don't want to make people who don't care. I don't want to alarm folks. Thoughts? Hello. 
I mean, this is speaking to the Nate building the clack thing for CLI, the Astro CLI, and then open sourcing it separately. It, that's just a wonderful thing, like truly a nice thing. Um, sorry, I'm not yet working on the Astro project. Hi, hey, Rare Xbox. Um, I will be soon. I'm just getting through a quick pull request first. Um, so yeah, it looks like they applied all the changes. I previously reviewed this thing. Um, so you know what, let me just, I'm not gonna go through this now because I really wanna actually get to my personal repo, but if y'all are curious, this is the pull request where they overhauled a bunch of the UI um, in my template TypeScript repos setup script. Awesome, this all looks great. Just the one thought on gray, yellow. Other than that, I'm happy to, to merge. And if you really think yellow is best, I'm still happy to, to merge. Yeah, the whole Twitter open sourcing the things, like that's a lot of code. I would be scared to, to dive into there, but I also have no context on it. So I'm sure someone who actually knows like any of the subjects they cover, like machine learning or data recommendations or any of that stuff might have a much better time than me. Awesome. All right, let's get to my personal site. So this is the thing I promised I'd work on. And oh, only half an hour and I'm working on it, nice. Those are the Figma designs. This is the repo, joshuakgoberg.com next, for sale. So I'm real excited about it. Like uh, my current personal site is not as spruced up as it could be. It's fine, I think, but I made it like years and years ago and it, it doesn't really, I don't know. It's one big page and it's got a lot more content than it used to, like just number of talks and stuff. And I don't think the content flow is very good. So now I'm going with a multi-page app. I am using the Vercel adapter, I think. I just, I set it up on Vercel, like the default settings. Like honestly, props to Vercel, their setup experience for everything has always been amazing. Like I just, I added it, I clicked yes, I clicked yes, and it just deployed. So if we go to the preview, which is here, voila. All right, so this is what I got done mostly on stream yesterday and then some time after stream, I got the homepage and then I have, well, I get, I have like started the blog. And actually I was starting to futz with the blog stuff earlier. So I should, um, I should push that. I get add all, get, ooh, how did I add a get sub -re Oh no, what did I do? What on earth? Oh no. I have to do that off screen. That's some private stuff. <sighs> I added, I accidentally cloned a repo inside, <laughs> inside another repo. That's funny. Oh my God. Okay. That's better. Okay. <laughs> The mobile is looking bad. Uh, <laughs> it is not looking good. Um, for many years, I was all up in arms about how you should implement the mobile designs first and uh, then you should do the desktop. But now I, I do a much more casual process. I first implement the desktop designs to get a feel for it. And I keep mobile in mind, you know, making sure that what I'm doing isn't gonna be super desktop specific. Then I will rewrite it using mobile like first as the design, and then I will expand it to desktop. So that way I can iterate quickly on the part of it that actually is more difficult, the desktop first, to get a feel for the stuff and change things around. Then I will do the right thing of mobile first. And yeah, you can clone a repo inside another one. Fun fact, actually, um, the learning TypeScript site, um, it has a sub repo inside of it. Where is it? Source content. Um, there, it's like an actual feature of Git. So like um, learning TypeScript projects is a repo that contains all the projects from my learning TypeScript book. Bang book. Um, so I want people to be able to clone this repo and just like run NPM install and like get started really quickly on the projects. But I also want to include the projects in the site because it includes the projects 
in the site. So instead of setting up like an NPM package or something that publishes these projects in some way, which would be weird because they're basically just all markdown files, I just have a git submodule. Uh, ooh, a TypeScript safe typing error in AstroDocs? Tell me more. So yeah, that's a thing you can do. Most people choose not to do it because eh, most of the time there's no need, but sometimes it's useful. Anyway, I'm gonna, wow, look at that quick for a cell deploy. Very nice. I'm going to start working on my blog. So one of the last things we worked on on the stream last night with Dan Jutan was, and Elliot, honestly, in the chat and others, uh, was this little like switcheroo component. Um, so now what I want to do is implement these designs. I've got the year selectors or like the year headings, H2s, and I've got the blog posts themselves. And I'm just going to simplicity stake start with the blog post. So blog.astro. Also, how do you reverse something like that? I just deleted the folder. <laughs> the nice thing about Git is that it's largely file system based. So a lot of things that you can do accidentally, you can undo by just deleting something or reverting. All right. So just to see what each post has, I'm going to stringify the front matter and there's my local server localhost 3000 blog all right so they each got a date a description image and a title so i'm gonna actually let me just update the twitter thread and now i'm on the personal site What's the repo? JoshuaKilbo.com next. Boop. And boop. Cool. So I wanted, wanted to copy this. JSX. Comics good when. Right. And I think each of these could in theory be their, like I could separate this out to a component um, so I'm going to do that. I, I like always separating things into smaller components, even if it's only one, you know, what? actually was, um, I occasionally wrote at code Academy when I worked there, I helped design the, uh, TypeScript course, the emoji code course and the lol code course of those three courses. Well, I don't know which one's my favorite. Um, and then I did help write for the TypeScript course, but I don't know. Uh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it, but it's something I probably don't have time for. Free code camp's awesome, and they got a lot of awesome people. Apparently, like you, I'd love to hear it. Love to see it. Uh, they have a lot of people like you working on things, so I'll let them do their, their stuff without my interference. Anyway, um, what would one call this? Like blog preview, blog entry. We call it blog entry until someone says something better. Uh, Let's see. Post. And I want a new component. Yeah, can you? Hmm. Okay, blog entry.str, never mind. And I'm gonna export my interface so that my linter doesn't complain about it being um, unused. Hell yeah. So we got, oh geez, I already forget. We got, Date, string, description, string, uh, image, string, and title, string. Cool. This will be fun. Date formatting. Love, love to mess around with date formatting in my with components. Okay. A href equals, is there no like slug or like ID? All posts, await astro.glob. What is all posts? I want to get like the, the URI for each of the things. Oop, got to import blog entry. How do I, why is it not auto importing that for me? 
Opponent's blog entry. Test. Is that not working? Not find module components or its corresponding type declarations. I got blog entry .astro. It's under components. Oh my. Ooh, Quincy followed you. That's awesome. Um, what's the difference between type and interface? Very little. Um, I go over this in my book. Uh, a type is, there's practically almost no difference. One of these days I'm going to write an article on it. Um, I think Matt Pocock did. <laughs> uh, I guess not. Is this from Thea? Oh no, that's, that's Matt Pocock. Okay. Um, yeah, there's almost no difference. Um, I'll gloss over that for now. Why is this not getting found though? I'm confused. Blog entry dot astro. Does that work? Also, why is it tab and contents? Why is this tabs and content? Because it's a TSX file. It's a it's solid component. This one needs astro. Got it. Still mapping my head around intermixing two different or two or more different component library thingies. Okay. Is missing the properties post dots. Oh, here we go. The front matter URL equals post.url. Okay. ST URL string. Now if we go to a href equals astro.props.url, this should work. And a one test. Ooh, let's move that to the bottom. Oh yeah, export default. Um, where did you see that? Like, are you asking for my opinion on, <laughs> on export default or? Uh, let's look at this component. Astro.props.url. Uh, let's log those props. Is there like an Astro DevTools that I can use, like the React DevTools? Extension. Uh, OS Labs beta. Hmm. Astro detected, detects it. Nope, oh well. This is fine. URL is undefined. Post.url. I'll go to console.log post. Fun fact, you can sequential operator. This just logs the thing and then you can say return. Does this work? Nope, yeah, post, I'm just gonna make this uh, multi-line function and manually, okay. Okay, I wanna log the post. Why is its URL not working? Can I do like object.entries post? Will this turn all the getters into, yeah, okay. So it's not getting a uh, URL. Post.slug, ah, is it slug? Post.slug. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to consult the docs. <laughs> uh, no post.slug, astro.glob blog slash index TMD, mm. astro blog. I have it open another tab. Is there slug mentions? Post.url. Why is there no post URL? Wait, wait, oh. Oh yeah, so for like solid components, one would want to export defaults. You don't have to, but you could. Um, I just do it so I don't have to name them. But in the Astro components, no, it's just HTML. Use content collections. Ooh, thanks Ryan. Um, Oh, right, this is a whole thing. Astro content collections. The dot astro, right. And this is the like strongly typed content so that you can make sure that like all the front matter exists, right? This is that whole thing. I kind of don't want that. Like f eventually it would be cool to add, but I just want to get the thing to work. <laughs> is that bad? 
Am I wrong? It's like, can I just do slug my plans for 2023 to do use content collections? Yep, as in I'm wrong. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I love being told I'm wrong. It makes me happy. It shows that, yes, there is something I don't yet know, but I can learn. This is great. Um, so there's a bunch of explanation here that I'm going to gloss over because it hurts people who work on the docs and the library when I gloss over their collections. Uh, so I'm going to create source content config. Exit zero. Make dir source content touch source content config ts config ts. And I'm going to define my collections. Oop. Why doesn't TypeScript know of Oop. Astro dev? Wait, what does it say? Astro build or Astro sync to first generate the types. Restarting the TS server may be necessary. Look at that great error message. What are we trying to grab, grab from glob? Good question. Um, PMPM Astro sync. I'm, I have a bunch of blog posts in theory in practice so far one that I've copied over from my existing blog as markdown files. I just put them in a blog directory and I want to glob all of them so I can list them as blog entries like in the designs. Blog is not a collection. Check your, check your content config for typos. All right. I need to allow JS if I use them, I don't. So defining a schema, blog collection equals define collection. And I'm gonna say schema is Z, aka Zob, right? Z dot object with title, Z dot string, tags. Look at this. Y'all uh, y'all know me already. And it's like every other blog creator in the world, except my images are required because Gotta have that SEO. Ooh, 98. What is that, seven times 12? Okay. Why is ESLint complaining? Unsafe assignment of an any value. Define collection. Where's the any though? Hmm. Maybe I should restart my ESLint server. Probably using old TypeScripts. Don't like contents. All right. PPM Astro build. See if that syncs things up. Blog is not a collection. Astro blog is not a collection. Do I have to actually go through and do things? Oh, I should add dot astro if I get ignore if I didn't already. Did I do that already? Was that set up for me? Dot astro. Yep, I already set up. There's nothing in content. Is that the, is that the re <laughs> That's not a good error message. <laughs> uh, not a fan of this error message. Thanks for mentioning Ali. Content blog is empty. Cool. All right, so if I take my existing blog and move it into source content, let's delete that old folder. Oops, got. Ah, VS Code, sometimes you hurt me. Delete old blog folder, pmpm dev, an error has occurred, right? Because I didn't update the blog astros query. And where is the way to grab these? 
third party, define data types, querying selectors. There we go. Your folder is still not called blog. Or what did I call this? All posts. Get collection. Ooh, so this is like fancy and generic. Ah, yes, I see. I see what you mean. It thinks that the collection is called my plans for 2023. That's funny. I am amused by this. Okay, blog slash. All right. And I'm just going to restart. Does it work? Nice. It's missing tags. Love to hear it. Uh, tags, personal resolutions, uh, open source. That's such a, look at this beautiful error message. Expected type array. Oh, did I put it? What? Expected type array received. Ah, oh. does it have to be like a YAML array? Is that a, do I remember this, seeing this somewhere? Awesome. Love to see it. Look at this, this is cool. I betcha. If I go YAML, all blog posts, post, yep, the post, and that's that image. So I just want to, I want to grab the type of this. Is there like a TypeScript guide? Ugh, I hate how whenever I search this thing expandos. Passing contents as props. Ugh, you read my mind. Love, love it. Uh, what was it? Blog entry. There we go. Nice. Ask. So it's post equals post equals post. For the blog entry, very nice. Then I can do astro.props.post. Dot slug log slash that. And now, who is it's clickable? Blog my plans for twenty twenty three. Yay! Looking good. Hans post equals astro dot props. Love it. This is well typed. You're right. This was much better. Thank you for uh, yelling at me to, t to do it the right way. Um, oh, no, I'm still console logging somewhere. Let's get rid of that. All right. Let's just, uh, ooh, got a new env, astro types. Very nice. Um, Working Astro content collection. Looks good. All right, now that I've got the content collection working, I'm gonna make it match the designs. So in the designs, let's see. We have just a blog entry. Yams. Dude, yams are such an underrated vegetable slash sweet potatoes. Like, oh, sweet potato fries are the best kind of fry. I love French fries, but there's nothing like a good sweet potato fry. That being said, I find it harder to eat a lot of sweet potato fries. Like I get tired of them more quickly than a regular French fries. Life is hard. Anyway, the, um, let's see. I don't think I want the whole thing to be a link. I'm not sure. How do I do it now? Gold blog. By the way, I call it gold blog because I'm a buffoon. Uh, okay, yeah, it's just the title is a link. I think, by the way, I, this is the stupidest post I ever did. Seven reasons why conversational AI is dangerous. I generated the whole thing with AI, including the images. <laughs> Just to be a turd. <laughs> I amuse myself sometimes. I'm in a particular situation. Ooh, is it the same if I open up a script tag with source equals my script or importing the script inside the script tags? Um, as long as the JavaScript executes, it's roughly the same, but there are some subtle differences between like importing a script uh, like dynamically. It depends how you dynamically import. Um, but that's a deep question that I won't go into now. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna 
make the title a... Uh, make the title a link. And then everything in this will be an article for some magic accessibility. All right, so we got an image. Post dot collection post dot data dot image. I think that's gonna have to be changed. That's gonna be like slash images, because I I just used a string for that. Oh no, it's post.data.image. I'll I'll see what happens when I do that. Oh right. Oh my god, I totally forgot. The fries in Brussels were so freaking good. Oh, love it. Um, I don't detest AI, for the record. I just detest the vast majority of applications of it. Kind of like crypto, except AI's applications these days are way better on average than the average or median or whatever crypto. I think it's incredible and just super early stage. And this always happens. Like this is the definition of the Gartner hype cycle. This is a thing. Um, somewhat contested of how legitimate this is. Um, they really should have called him Bel Belgian fries. I don't know why they didn't. Like we're in the peak of inflated expectations right now or, or approaching it where just everything is AI. And then in like a, within a year or two, everyone's gonna start pooping on it, realizing how terrible all these things are. Oh my God, it's constantly hallucinating. And then we're gonna hit the plateau of productivity after the slope of enlightenment, Blah, whatever. Good morning. How are you doing? Thanks for coming. Anyway. Let's let's look at or let's continue this. So post dot data dot uh, title. Here we go. Oh yeah, I've got this like silly and a one. Um, here. Why do I? Why do I even have that sections? Oh yeah. So default value is. I have a um. Right. I'm gonna need to make this a component actually. AI is an aid like a team of advisors. I like that because sometimes your advisors are wrong and they should stop being so confident about their wrongness. All right, so I want a, um, let's see, a blog entry list with no filter. So I'm just gonna make a new component for this. Actually, I'm, there's no need to have blog entry. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, blog entry list. And this is going to be the thing that queries my blogs. Let's see if I'm allowed to do this. No one yells at me about it. Uh, oh, I'm hiccuping. Pardon me. I really like that analogy, actually. Um, just like a, um, a collection of advisors. So it's gonna be an unordered list. Automated restaurant. I'll look at that later. All right. Um, all blog posts, and then this is gonna be what has the blog entry in it. All right. So this looks good. It works still. Wow. Oh wait, no, I didn't save blog to Astro. Ah. I can't do, um, can I not do front matter or like the JSX in the, this area? What's the right way to do this? You can define differences between Astro and JSX, oh boy. Dot's name, dynamic HTML. Uh, I can do dynamic tags. I can do fragments, items. Hmm. How do I? Got it. Front macro is regular, so no JSX. All right. So, um, tabs and content. Um, how would I do this then? I want 
blog entry list the astro component to be used in the sections here for this Ooh, UI frameworks for writing work components. Okay. Um, leaning on you again, I'm sorry, but what's the right way for me to, I'm just going to Google in the meantime while y'all are chatting about it. Astro, how to inject JSX from fun matter. Is that a readable query? That looks unrelated. I want it to be that in this, each of the sections is a list, like a blog entry list. Um, hmm. Each of the sections is a blog entry list and, oh, you know what? I can just move them down here, can't I? Basically, I want this. <laughs> Does this work? Come on. No. You will value line 33. Just make blog entry list except a prop. Okay, but then how how do I render? How's what why is this complaining about line 33? There are only 21, 22 lines here. Um Sorry, I'm not following except a prop with JSX map. So the way tabs and content work is it's a solid component that takes in a contents uh, for each section. So sections is an object with string keys and JSX. Oh, wait, is this? This is an unused interface. Um, so JSX element is the value under each section. And I want it to show the, the currently visible section when it's like, it's like all shows this one and all's section is, um, all section is just like a blog entry list. So I guess I could do a like render section. Okay. If it's weird, I mean, I'm just thinking in react. So that's, that's not, I'm, sh I know that's not the right mental model. Is there a better way to, to do what I'm trying to achieve? Also, just for fun, I can, in the meantime, just put like this here for now. That should work. So just to test, I can do this. And so while you're furiously telling me why I'm thinking about this very wrong, um, I can start styling it. Let's style type none padding left zero. Does the UL have the padding left? Yes. Left to my own devices, I'm sure I could figure it out, but I sure would appreciate it. If, if you have any input, Elian, or anyone, on how the, the right way to do this would be that. I would love that. Thank you. <laughs> um, OK, so I've got the image. So each blog entry has the image and then a like section on the right. Um, and the article is uh, display. Um, so I want each of the lists is static, but which list is being displayed is dynamic. If that makes sense. Make the list accept a list of entries. Okay. Thanks for coming by, Sabrina. Were you the one who said you're going on a weekend vacation? If so, enjoy. Make, make blog entry list take in. Okay. But okay, so my tabs and content component is solid. Can I pass? the JSX result, or can I pass blog entry list to tabs and component in any way? Is that allowed? Like if I do like blog entry list, like filter equals all or whatever, like is that gonna, is that gonna work? Hmm. 
So why is it not showing the image yet? I need to work on that. Okay. Image is okay. So post data image images slash. Um, now I need to, f if it's a solid component, you can, if it's an astro component, you can't. Oh, darn. Well, I guess I could turn it into, uh, oh, thanks Ryan. I appreciate that. That's a good idea. Website vanilla. I guess I could turn this into, um, uh, and a solid component. I just, I really like the astro components. Their syntax is really nice. Oh, well, okay. This is fine blog entry dot tsx blog entry list dot tsx uh, convert these over yeah my old website um, export default function and then we have props uh, post equals props blog entry props These don't need to actually be export default. You're still not losing performance since the components can still be compiled down to HTML. Awesome. So that makes me happy. Uh, the only downside is now I'm going to have to make a CSS file, blog entry styles CSS, and that blog entry. Can't wait till I find a component library that I like that does this for me. Styles dot blog entry import styles from blog entry styles CSS. <sighs> Pass post equals props. All right, so styles dot why is this complaining? Props dot post dot data. Dot image, props up post, props up post. Why is this complaining? Styles dot blog entry does not exist on tile type string. Why is it telling me that styles is type string? <sighs> oh, module CSS. That's what it is. Yep, it should be module CSS. I love it. The delay makes us both seem smart. Yeah, Mastodon is fine. It's not great. The UI is not as good as Twitter's. It's faster though, because I, I think because it doesn't have some fancy schmancy algorithm. Oh, your well's on uh, Mastodon, do I follow you? No, I do. Uh, great. It's fine though. It doesn't have as many people. What is 1200p? Oh, hey, Kevin. Thanks for subscribing. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Um, failed to load. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Because, whoa. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that import. Uh, that's a that's a funky. I'm gonna move the entry list back. To, oh my God! Wow. Someone who works on the language server. Uh, you have some. You have some odd uh, auto fixing going on there. Um, geez, okay, so I fixed blog entry. Blog entry works. Now let's do blog entry list. Export function blog entry list, which takes on props. Blog entry list props. Returns a UL. Oops. Um, Props, let's say props.posts.map. Or interface entry list props. And this I changed to a named exports. Posts. What is the type of a post? Collection entry. Which I grabbed from Astro Contents. Alrighty. And then the styles, I move to my own style, module CSS file. All right, ULs, 
name is styles.blog entry list. And I call this one, uh, you know, I'm just gonna call it list an item. Relative imports. Yep. Because they are relative. Good morning. Hi, Wilfred. How's it going? Because they are relative to each other. Oh yeah, I got auto fixed to use a four. Very nice. I'm gonna just switch this to a single line. Eh. Eh. There it is. I'm great. I'm uh, making progress on the site. It doesn't look like it because everything's broken, but in theory, I'm just switching some components over from Astro to Solid so I can make them all fancy and dynamic. Uh, got components blog entry list, which is named, and here we got blog entry list, default value, and then here, when we look at all, we see just all blog posts. Posts, plural. All right, come on. Get collection from Astro Content. Come on. Expected, greater than, but found posts. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, all right. Um, this is back to what you were saying. Ooh, Chrome 112, I'm just seeing this now. That's exciting. I'm not an Elk user, that's correct. Sorry, just scrolling up now. Uh, I, I just use vanilla. <laughs> Eventually I might try Elk. Okay, so. So you just told me this. I Am I not allowed to put JSX in the Astro component. Can you do like get collection inside a solid component? Should I just turn this whole thing into, <laughs> I feel silly turning the whole blog into, um, into a solid component. But I guess I could do like, I could, oops, turn tabs and con or like make a blog area. It should work. Maybe if I try restarting my dev server. Nope. Also, it's complaining about line 36. So I'm going to blog is broken. I'm going to save this commit so I can file a bug with it. Um, to do notes. Uh, I thought this should work. Uh, rendering JSX for solid and Astro, but the, a bug we'll need to file is that the line number is offset. File is 22 lines long. Is it 22 lines? 25, 26. Always file issues when something is going wrong. so that people can fix them. And by something going wrong, I mean file an issue if specifically something is broken, like in the framework, not if your code is busted. And here I'm saying that it's reporting line 36 in a file that only has 25 lines, 26 lines. All right, so this is unfortunate. Um, what I can do to get around this is I could do like a, um, like a blog tabs and content, you could do that. Is it the rendered HTML is what we're going to do? That's an interesting idea, actually. I don't know. Someone else will have to figure that out. Because <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna keep going because I wanna get this thing to work. So blog entry list, blog, I already forgot what I called the component, blog tabs and content. What is that? There it is. Pops is post. So here I'm gonna move my tabs and content to inside blog tabs and content along with posts equals all blog posts 
being provided as a prop. That's default value equals all. It's just going to go here. What does client load do? Great question. Client load says um, this should be loaded as a script on the client so that you can provide interactivity. Um, because this tabs and content thing is, oh, right. This goes in the Astro component. So this says blog tabs and content gets loaded on the client. So normally Astro just renders everything as static HTML, which is really nice for like a example, a personal site. And for my thing, what I want to do is pops.post. Um, I want it to be dynamic. So you can have this little island. It's called a dynamic interactivity. Thank you, Alien Crodes, for the client directives link. Awesome. So now the list is working. Blog tabs and content. Remove unused imports. Uh, renders blog. Renders the tabs and content with a blog entry list. And I'm going to uh, uh, filter these to uh, interpersonal, the tag. I'm going to write a function. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to write a function inside filter tag, which returns one line this all fancy prop stop post stop filter post post dot data dot tags dot includes tag. Voila. So for each of these, I can make the make the filter. So personal tech and TypeScript contribution diary. There's going to be some case sensitivity issue somewhere. Did I already? Oops. Okay. I guess my tags are lowercase. This is fine. Cool. Oh yeah. Look at this. It's already filtering. Very nice. So I'm going to say this is a commit blog filtering works. Cool. It is 1144 my time. I'm going to, I'm going to get the display thing here working. And then I'm going to do what I got too tired for last night. I'm going to add some static analysis based off that template package that I was working on earlier. So that'll be fun. You got a bunch of lint rules. I like enabling what's everyone doing for lunch, by the way. Uh, or dinner if you're in some other time zone or breakfast if you're in another. Right, so I got image, title, description, dates. Um, pizza, heck yes. Not fries. Uh, image, title, div, uh, props.post.data.com. Um, I want description. What is the description listed as in the MD file? Dixon MD description. So config TS, I want description. Does Astro like auto reload if I change this? Data dot, dis oh, it does, so nice. Hey, Philly cheesesteak. Speaking my language over here. You know, I have ordered three Philly cheesesteaks in Philly. Two were in like the first month or so that we came here. One of them didn't have cheese in it. The place just forgot to put the cheese or something. Or maybe they confused us with a different order. I don't know. It was very confusing. Very surprising. Very upsetting. And why do I not get a description? I know. <laughs> Literally part of the name and you screw it up. Like, how does that, how does that work? I don't know. And the sad thing is it was from the, like the two famous places I think that are next to each other. I don't remember which one screwed up the cheese. Terrible, truly terrible. All right, so the post doesn't seem to have a data dot description. I'll just gonna start depth turbo just to make sure that's not it. Roxborough for the best steaks. Kevin, are you in the Philly area? Because I'm taking notes. <laughs> Okay, so I did need to restart, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, my plans are 2023. 
North of Philly, lived here in college. Nice. Yeah, I'm in a Point Breeze in South Philly. If anyone, if anyone's around, hit me up. There's like, oops, compared to New York City, where I lived prior to this, there's so few people. That's one of the downsides of here, but it's a great city. I truly don't know how they forgot the cheese. All right, so this, by the way, this is going to upset some people. I like props um, for my design systems. I like components. What? Why is text not importing nicely? Can we start TS server? Oh my god. Ugh, this whole thing. Ugh. So what I want to do is have a component that can take in like a, like a font size equals prop, but I wrote it in Astro and I don't want to send that back to solid. So never mind. I'm just going to use a class name for this. All right. Um, blog entry. Uh, I'm going to call this like class equals title. So I said title. I'm using CSS variables for my font sizes and stuff. Font size, bar, font size, medium. Font weight, font weight, medium. Yeah, I can't import the text, so I would have had to convert the text component over to solid. So, now oh well. It's not title, it's styles.title. Clearly, I'm getting tired because, really. Font, and I want this to be light. I want it, do I want it light? No, it's, 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 a, it's a chunk. Oh yeah, and I wanted a persistent copy of the image under public so it doesn't change um, with deployments, images. I don't know if I should do it, this, this is necessary, but just in case. Uh, images, post data image, come on image. New tab, images, I should, oh, and it's a PNG, not a JPEG. Okie dokie. Do I have any JPEGs? Nope. All PNG. PNG. Nice. That looks beautiful. <laughs> All right. So image, I'll just make that the image uh, width 100px height 100px. But this isn't going to work well because it'll crop it. So that's going to say image area. Uh, ooh, bang astro. Thank you, Ryan, as always. All right, so I want this image to be uh, image area. Nice. Dev class equals styles image area. Someone tell me there's a better way to do this, but background image. It's going to be this thing, like an inline style. There's got to be a better way to do what I want to do. Display block with, let's make these uh, both, I don't know, like two rem or something, five rem. And background, why is this not showing up anywhere? Style background. Oh, it's URLs with the quotes. There we go. Background size cover contain cover. Let's see. What if I should just make like a thumbnail image for each of these? Border radius. 100%. Well, this is fine. <laughs> Display flex gap, one rem, and margin auto. Why is this all the way to the left? What's happening? What's, what's going on here? Display inline flex? No. Ah, I want my li to be capped in width to the main areas width. Why is it so far to the left? Am I doing, am I being silly here? What's going on? I want this more inside. Mm. Mm. 
it should be to the same ah the padding on the header that's what it is it they, they should be lined up next to each other i shouldn't use okay i shouldn't use image as background image so astro won't be able to optimize that's a good point let me what oh wrong, wrong tab uh in ui framework components uh what is oh so image so if i if i wanted to if i wanted to just use this image as is is there a good way to do that because i need i basically need to crop the source so um, I think what I'd have to do here, please correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, to do, I need need to make a specific thumbnail per um, blog image. Does, if Astro has like auto resizing and stuff built in, is there like a thing? Um, so yeah, experimental assets feature should look into experimental assets feature. Cool, thank you. Um, I, I don't want to do that right now because <laughs> it works and I'm getting tired, but thank you. I, I promise I will look into that. But right now what I want to do is get the header to have um, uh, padding to rem zero, no horizontal padding. There we go. So now these line up nicely. Um, I'm also, oh, I just, I guess it's fine that it's so far left because when I have longer posts, it'll be pretty. All right, cool. So just this font needs to be like lightweight and italic. And then I also want to render the date underneath it. So description, date, data dot date, post dot data dot I didn't put the date in the collection. Yep, date is there. Dates. And then, what was it? Date and, ooh. Got another div. Love me some divs. Date and, oh my God, estimated reading time. Is that a thing yet in Astro? Is that someone made an integration? Calc, calculated reading time. Ooh. So I add these two fellas. PM add these things. Then remark reading time. Touch remark reading time. Yes. Ooh, I can make it as a date. Is it, am I doing the thing that you're suggesting? Wait, oh, z.date, date, z.date, cool, yep, yep. I freak. I don't use Zod very often, but that's awesome. Data.astro, oh, because it's an MJS file. All right, um, I'll have to set up my linter after this. And then in my config, markdown remark plugins, remark reading time. Very nice. This is so freaking smooth, by the way. These docs are great. Props to y'all over there, the Astro team folks. Okay, so pmpm run dev, or just pmpm dev. Remark reading time is not defined. Oh no, what did I, what did I do? Astro config MJS. I forgot to, <laughs> forgot to import it. I was about to get all mad. Oh no, the docs aren't that good. No, it's just, it's just me. It's always me. All right. Cool. Expected type dates. Received string. Oh no. Where is it? Does it mention dates? Z dot string. Transform a 
Dates written without quotes around them are interpreted as date objects. I was reading right there. So, very nice. <laughs> For the record, I, I did this before I saw you tell me to do the thing. Very nice, thank you. Cool, 404. And it works, hooray. And let's restart dev, get those dates piping through. Date is not being piped through. Oh, no cheesesteak. Thanks for tuning in, Kevin, I appreciate you. All right, let's see, data dot date, data dot uh, post dot, where is this? All right, and uh, where's the reading time gonna show up in, um, all markdown documents will have it calculated minutes read, but is there a way to do this in the config? Is that gonna work? Post dot data dot minutes read. Why is this yelling at me? Dates needs to be two stringed. I don't I don't remember how I format it, so I'm just gonna two string it for now. Yeah, look at that, that's awesome. It works. Hooray. Cool. Um class equals styles dot Tidbits. I'm going to call this tidbits. I think that's a cute name for it. Blog entry module. Tidbits. Font size bar. Font size small. Well, have a good time at work, Ryan. Appreciate you. Uh, display flex gap one down, let's say. Ooh. Class equals styles description. Yeah, at around, once I finish this, I'm gonna switch over the last bit, which is gonna be adding more lint rules. Yay! Font weight, bar font weight. I think it's light is what I call it. Yeah, font style italic. Margin, 2.5 rems, zero. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's looking more professional. All right. Does anyone remember off the top of their head how to format dates? JS. I want. Uh... <sighs> I know there's like a whole temporal thing. I really just want the, the most basic. I don't want to use a library like Luxon or DateFNs. I don't want to do this thing. Don't want a library. Ooh, this looks this looks pretty. Oh, Brittany, thank you for hanging out. To ISO string dot slice zero ten. I'm just curious what that's gonna look like. Yeah, that looks terrible. But uh, on the other hand, <laughs> what if I do dot split on spaces dot slice one three dot join space does that grab oh slice one four march 22nd 2023 yeah let's go that's close enough this is fine <laughs> um and doesn't have a comma but this is okay um and i'm just going to add one more of these posts with a bigger name uh so tuple types indexed by a type parameter to do fill this out all. And this was, oh, this was the 23rd. No, this is the 30th. 
Yeah, this is a fun fix. Fixing a slight bug in how TypeScript resolves type elements of tuple types indexed by type parameters. Tags, open source, TypeScript, TypeScript contribution diary. Title. I'm just gonna copy. Oops. And front matter minutes read required, but that's a plugin. What if I restart my dev server? Does it work? Minutes read is not being uh, added. That's unfortunate. I can put it in manually, I guess, but not a huge fan. Okay, I don't know why these need to be here manually. I'm sure I'm doing something silly, but uh, hmm. Astro Sync with pleasure. So you're saying I have to prefix with an underscore to ignore? Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I really don't have the energy to deal with this now. I'm sorry. I'm sure there's a way I could debug this using the recommended debugging tools and get it to work. But yep, for now, I'm just going to put in the minutes read and to do investigate plugin. Ah, uh, well. One little touch up here, plug entry list. This thing is... Uh, it needs a little more padding. Let's see, dot list. Oops, I have to open it styles. I can make it optional. Okay, good to know. For now, I'm going to make it required because I want them to always have it. Um, just put the UL on top because it comes first in the HTML. Display, flex, gap, one rem. Flex, direction, column. Mm, two rem. That's better. All right, and the bottom bits are supposed to be font, uh, font weight lights. Let's see. That looks good. And you know what? Um, where is it? Text rendering optimized legibility. I also have to copy that. Yeah, doesn't look like it's doing anything. This is fine. Unless, no, don't think it makes a difference. All right, so this is good enough for now. I'll tweak it around later, but now, working blog list. Yay, cool stuff. So what I want to do now is add in a bunch of static analysis. Uh, <laughs> finally. The thing that actually excites me personally, the stuff that I wanted to do. Um, static analysis is great. I like it. And the first bit I'm going to work on is the ESLint config. So right now I'm just using basically the base setup one. Um, I I got the TypeScript ESLint plugin, the Astro, JSX accessibility, solid, and simple import sort. Simple import sort is a plugin that uh, doesn't expose like a recommended rule set that you can extend from it asks you for some reason to enable the rules by defaults i guess there's just only two so they didn't feel like it was necessary oops all right so that's enabled imgam lint dash dash fix so i'm gonna post this here in the chat oh no the plugin Forks on Astro files. That's unfortunate. Um, I'm gonna have to make a to do to forks on Astro files. Uh, and then I can always just turn these off in Astro files. 
do investigate file a bug off run pmpm run lint oh yeah this is my world now look at me i am the captain <laughs> okay cannot read properties run. oh wait that wasn't i didn't even look at the call stack right it's 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 um it's not those rules i don't think it's it's me typescript ds lint cannot read properties undefined reading parent no unsafe no unsafe assignment just making sure i ran it again and yeah it's no unsafe assignment whoops i blamed someone else when i shouldn't have you see a slint forks on astro files you heard it here folks so this is one of the downsides of using a relatively new flashy framework like astro and this is one of the downsides of um using syntax that adds to javascript the way in a like not extremely common way like jsx when it got started didn't work well with tooling now it's well supported Today, Astro isn't super well supported in, say, TypeScript PSLint, as evidenced by us just not knowing that the no unsafe assignment will blatantly fails on an Astro parsed file. So that's unfortunate. Um, oh, I'm also running on the dist folder, ESLint ignore. So I see that this file is getting touched on, ignore. So I'm wondering, I should built output and generated types. I don't know about you, but I never really liked having comments in my uh, getting ignored in similar files. I'd always just put them all, lump them all in. Uh, I don't need any of these because we're not using. Are we using M? We're not using M. That can go away. Um, all right, so, oops, pmpm lint fix. Yeah, so ESLint ignore. We don't need to run ESLint on .astro or the dist directory. That That's silly. Uh, parsing error, unknown token at 30, expected C. Line one. Oh, header links got borked somehow. Uh, wait, how is there a... <laughs> All right, so the solid plugin must have... There's a solid rule, like an ESLint plugin solid rule that says, um, hey, if you've got a dot map, you should actually use a four. And turns out I've enabled that plugin on my Astro files too. So the solid rule, which is specific to solid code, was running on Astro files, which is why it changed this Astro file to use a solid JS for loop. But that's silly. That's not necessary. What I should actually do is revert these changes and make the solid rules only run on TSX files. Because there's no need for ESLint plugin solid to run on um, Astro files. So I'm just gonna put plugin solid TypeScript under extends for T TSX files. That's fun. See what else it gives me. Unsafe, oh boy. Unsafe member access dot class on an any value. What is the any value? It is astro dot props. Okay, I did astro dot props dot class because, and that's any because I didn't declare my props. which is props. And now it's props, okay. Do I still have to look at docs when configuring TS config, ESLint or anything else? Yes. I literally wrote a book or some have said the book on TypeScript and I look at the docs. I look back to my book. Um, the important thing with configuring these types of things, by the way, welcome. Thanks for chatting first time. The important thing with configuring is to memorize or try to understand at the very least the core concepts, the idea of if you're configuring TypeScript, what, what you care about when it comes to type checking or with a minning. 
Um, but don't worry about memorizing the syntax. The syntax is, you know, copy and pasteable. And yeah, it, I honestly, I'm going to shout out my own book here, selfishly. Um, learning TypeScript, I think, does a good job, a really good job, I think, of explaining all the options. But if you don't want to shell out, uh, well, for starters, there's an O'Reilly free, where's the book link? Yeah, you can get a free trial of the book on O'Reilly. Also, um, aka.ms tsconfig, if you've been there yet, it's the TypeScript langs, docs, and tsconfig, they do explain each of them. But yeah, I mean, there's a, it's a slog. There's Because JavaScript has so many different ways people use it, yeah, there's just a bajillion, like oh, literally over 100 like useful TypeScript compiler options. If there are any in particular you're trying to understand, post them in the chat, I'm always happy to explain, if I can. Yeah, that is the nature of web development. Um, there's just a lot of things in flux. A lot of things are changing and you know what? It means the docs aren't always as good as we want them to be. And there's a lot of like weird stuff integrating that gets hard to configure. Cool. All right. Don't use a triple slash reference for Astro types DTS. Use import style instead. I don't know that this, uh, rule is relevant. So by the way, Fun fact for the room, whenever you see an ESLint complaints in your editor, there are two things you should do first. First, read the darn message. I have seen so many people, junior, senior, whatever, just not even read the error message before trying to debug it. Read the error message. Second is click the link because all ESLint rules that you're probably running have docs pages and we put a lot of effort into these. So this one explains that, um, we have TypeScript triple slash references, but um, this is like a really old language feature that people generally don't care about. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna disable the rule for the file. Like this is an old thing. We don't need to care about it. It's some way to import things into the type system. I'm trying to understand everything. Well, yeah, that's always hard understanding everything at once. Definitely recommend learning what like common JS, the module format is versus ES next or ECMAScript modules. And then you have different language targets. Like each version of JavaScript has a different name and builds on the previous versions. So like ES5 is a really old JavaScript version. ES6, AKA ES2015, there was a rename, is like ES5 plus some new syntax. Then there's ES2016, 17 and so on. Fun stuff. All right, PMPM PM dev and Ah, the fixer ran on this file too, I can tell. By the way, this is not a great error message. Ooh, the MDTS. Oh yeah, I didn't even know JavaScript versions. Oh yeah. So there is a whole committee called TC39, uh, which is the standards group that works on JavaScript. And the reason why JavaScript has versions is because we want to add to the language. There are all sorts of awesome new features people are suggesting. Like async await and optional chaining are two new ones that came in over the last few years. Uh, so each version of say Node.js or the browsers like Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, Safari, um, they all keep updating to, and each browser, each environment, each JavaScript runtime has to implement each new JavaScript language feature. So we group them into years. Like we say, okay, ES 2022, these are the new features as of 2022. And then browsers let us know once they've implemented those features. Hey, stupid learner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice in, in traditional languages like Java, you can specify what version. In JavaScript, you have, if you're writing a browser app, you have so little control over what people are using you. MDTS gets auto-generated, got it. So I'm gonna wanna just ESLint ignore or in the specific M file, I'm just gonna gonna ignore that rule. So I'm gonna turn it off. Let me get the name of the rule. Cool. JavaScript like, yep, just talking about ES twenty fifteen and sixteen and what all those things are. What's the difference between target and module? Oh, I love this. I'm actually drafting a learning TypeScript sites article on these things on target. Target specifies what output target you're gonna to compile to. 
So if I open up TypeScript land.org slash play, and let's say I've got this fancy code. Um, let's call this value string delay number. You don't have to know what this does. Just know that this is a function that's asynchronous. It waits some number of milliseconds and then the result of the value. If I do target ES2017, like a relatively new one, this is the, the equivalent JavaScript. Notice it's basically the same. We just removed the type definitions, which is how TypeScript works. Like for the most part, TypeScript syntax is just JavaScript plus some little things that you can remove to make it valid JavaScript. But if you go down to ES2015, we see that, uh, well, JavaScript prior to, what year did we add async await? Was it 2017? Yeah, in 2017, JavaScript added async await. If you want the equivalent code in older versions of JavaScript, you have to do this helper function called awaiter, which uses generators, which is a language feature added in, I wanna say, 2016, 2015. So if you wanna go even further back, you have to have a shim to support generators, and then your code looks like this, and it's totally unreadable. So having as high a target as possible is good, with the caveat that like not all runtimes support the latest and greatest. Yeah, you can. TypeScript language.org slash play is an excellent learning resource. I highly recommend using it to like futz around with your TS configs. I also recommend just TypeScript lang.org in general. It's a really good resource for, for learning TypeScript. And like taking an even further step back for any language, if you're learning the language, go to the languages site. They will have good docs if it's a good language. Um, I'm getting a little sidetracked, so I will answer this, but I'm, I'm going to step back to the ESLint stuff soon. Um, module is what module the code generated is going to be used. So like, let's say you do like import star as react from react. Um, I don't know, like you do like console log, let's look at react just to use it. Like it doesn't really matter. TypeScript will transform the standard ECMAScript modules, which is this syntax into a different module syntax if you ask it to. So like CommonJS is like an older Node.js type of modules. And oh God, wow, it looks different. So uh, <laughs> that's as far into that as I'm gonna go. But target and module mostly specify what, um, what your output emit looks like. Emit is like the technical term we use. Target also says what uh, your lib defaults to. And lib is the setting that specifies what um, built-ins you're allowed to use, like built-in global APIs. So like uh, string.replaceAll was added in, I want to say, ES2021. So if you go back to ES2020, TypeScript would yell at you saying, if replace all doesn't exist on your string, do you need to change your target library? Try changing it to 2021 or later. Cool. Yeah, so if someone, yeah, you want your target to be the newest target that all your users support. So like if you're using an older browser, make sure that it's a target old enough to support them. Yep, same page. Anyway, going back to ESLint stuff. Um, so I ran the auto fixer for, um, <laughs> for SolidJS on my Astro files by accident and now it broke my Astro files because it's not supposed to run in them. So that was unfortunate. Awesome. Yay. Glad you're getting it. That's an awesome feeling. Ooh, TS playback? Is that a different thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, fun fact there was like an old version of this that uh, got, I want to say, like copy and pasted and then forked and then turned into the TypeScript Langs website. I forget. Awesome. So it's working. I'm happy. Uh, enabled simple import sort. So by the way, simple import sort is, uh, okay, awesome. Same thing I was using. Simple import sort is great. It just orders your imports. Does it work in Astro files? I wonder. Well, if I go to TSX file, oh, and I've got my ESLint to auto fix on save. So heck yeah, it complains. Yay. All right. Next up, I'm going to go back to my template TypeScript node package. Plus one, ESLint is awesome. People give it a bad rep because it yells at you, but uh, ooh, should you target it module match? 
Uh, the two are different. Module is specifying the format, like common JS or ES next. Target is the language version. The two are not the same. So they can mismatch if you want them to often. Like you might have like target ES 2022, and then module might be like either common JS or ES next. Um, if you want an example of a project, um, here we go. Um, I don't even specify module. I just go with the default, which is ES next for target 2021 module resolution node, I think. And then I just use 2021 here. Um, so yeah, looking at my ESLint config. Okay, let's collapse that. Um, so I've got a few new plugins that I really like here. Um, one is plugin regular expression. So I'm going to put that here. So um, ESLint plugins are generally named ESLint plugin and then the name of it. So ESLint plugin regex. Uh, and then I have to add it to my array of plugins. Where is plugins? I don't like that this is out of alphabetical order. Um, and so I actually have a couple of uh, Got a couple of plugins that alphabetize all my things for me. Yeah, so this file is common.js. There's a new version of ESM configs that they're working on. It's experimental that will support and be ESM. But for now, common.js. And TypeScript sort keys, sort I thought I had an object literal sort keys. Just an object literal sort keys. Aha, sort keys. Here we go. Do I have it enabled in my? Just yeah, I don't like module exports. I never liked it. Sort keys, keys. No. Oh, okay. Well, I'll enable it in my rules. Yeah. Error. NPM lint. And now I should get a whole bunch of complaints. Yes. Things are complaining as they should. Line six. Dash dash fix. I'm ridiculous, by the way. Most people do not enable the ESLint sort keys rule. I just love things to be sorted. Why is this not a uh, fixing? Small and large sort lines ascending. I guess it doesn't come with an auto fixer. That's an Oh, it doesn't come with an auto fixer. That is why I didn't use it. Never mind. That's annoying. If a lint rule that's really nitpicky doesn't have an auto fixer, I generally don't want to use it. Because that's just annoying. Alright. Well, anyway, uh TypeScript sort keys, I believe, does have an auto fixer, and that's a plugin that makes sure that your um your TypeScript uh types are uh sorted. So all my files, I'm gonna extend type of sort keys recommended. Let's see. Do do do. Ooh, yeah. So in my I've also so my config in this other package is set up a little differently, but I also want to extend uh, the TypeScript ESLint strict rules. And I wanna enable deprecation slash deprecation. So pmpm add ESLint plugin deprecation. ESLint plugin deprecation lets you know if you're using something that's marked as at deprecated, like at deprecated the JS doc. Ah, oh no. And I think I need to do this somewhere, deprecation. Deprecation. Yep, you add it to my plugins list. Cool, and I'm just gonna go ahead and alphabetize my config here so it's easier for me personally to find things. Yay, npm lint. And then TypeScript ESLint recommend requiring type checking and strict enable a bunch more rules. <sighs> Deprecation also doesn't work on Astro files, that's very unfortunate. To do investigate, sad. 
deprecation. Deprecation. I do hate seeing lint rules crash. That's not good. Aha! Uh -huh. And this is complaining because let me restart ESLint server. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, these are out of order. Cool. So let me just, I'm going to paste this reference for the ESLint plugins I'm using. Sparkle emoji. Nice. It fixed it for me. Okay. Um, let's see. What else do I care about? Oh yeah, I've got like a couple of really, like one really nitpicky stylistic concern. Um, I, I generally, I like padding line between statements. <laughs> Just like one little padding line after your if statements. So always a blank line after a block like, like an if statement or something with the little squigglies. Cool. I think that's all the uh, ESM plugins I wanted to enable. Oh, nope. Here we go. Markdown. So for my MD files, pmpm add ESLint plugin markdown. And then under plugins, there's also, yeah. Extends plugin markdown recommended, files, whatever, processor markdown. That's fancy. Do I need to enable markdown anywhere else? Nope. Cool. Let's see. Strict rules. Aha, my JSON C. MDX is awesome. Um, do I need MDX yet? I might switch over to it eventually here. Let's see. All right. So for my JSON files, I use uh, add ESLint plugin JSON C. Why well, I'm getting hungry. All that talk about fries and cheesesteaks. Um, Cool. So that's going to make sure that other than package.json, I sort all my JSON keys and do like other good things. Whoop. And oh, this is JSON C. So fun fact, JSON doesn't support comments. So if you ever see a JSON file with comments, technically it's in JSON C language mode, which is JSON with comments. Yep, yep. And now we get to a fun little thing of I'm getting to a TypeScript PS on a rule that requires parser services, meaning it requires type information. Uh, it's being run on my TS config. So what I should have done, and this is, it's annoying to me that people need to know to do this, is move these recommended requiring type checking things to TS, TSX, and Astro files. To extend stems to do. All right. Cool. So we shouldn't be running TypeScript ESLint rules that require type checking on files that can't actually type check. Oh, and we shouldn't be running them on Astro files either because tsconfig doesn't understand them. Uh, but now my Astro files don't have the fancy linting. Can I, can I extends them? <laughs> Thanks. I, uh, I used to, used to tr practice typing quickly. It's so useful typing quickly, honestly. Oh, yay, it all works. So an example of a, a good type should be a rule that catches bugs is no floating promises. Let's say one, two, three. Um, if I like start a promise like this and then don't assign it anywhere, if I don't do anything with it, this is what's called a floating promise, which means you have some thing floating off into the distance and that's not good. Uh, it's one of my favorite, favorite rules. And uh, yeah, just verifying that, yep, if I add a floating promise, meaning it doesn't end with a call to catch and with a call to then or get awaited, then great. It gets caught. What other linting things do I want to look at? Got my, oh yeah, YAML. <laughs> I lint my YAML also, because I'm a maniac. Uh, so that's YAML ESLint parser. 
and the Eslint plugin camel. Note that one uses the A, one doesn't. I find that irritating. Yeah, when you have like only a few files in your project, the Eslint runs fast. It's really nice. <laughs> My keys are wrong in... I'm betting this is linting something I shouldn't... Yeah, I shouldn't... I shouldn't be ESLinting my PMPM lock file. That's silly. Oop, it's YAML, not, e not YAML. How would you say that? YAML, YAML? GitHub Actions, yep. That's actually such a great segue. I'm going to be doing those next. Uh, so, yep. Git add all, git status, git commit m added a bunch of linting. In my template package, I have all sorts of YAML things. So I'm actually just going to open uh, the template repo and just copy and paste that file over, that folder, pardon me. Ooh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I forgot I was doing things here. All right, so if we go to, there we go. If we go to .github, and I'm just going to paste that sucker right in. Let's look at what's there. So under actions, I prepare, I've set up this nice little setup thing that just, it's this little shared set of scripts, like three things it does that I can use in my actual GitHub actions. Uh, sets up the repo to use PNPM, uh, installs dependencies and sets up node, not in that order. It sets up nodes and PNPM, then installs dependencies, and then, yeah, that's it. Um, so those are used in my, where's my workflows? My workflows. So I've got build, which runs PNPM build, make sure that works. So that's nice. Um, I don't need some like lib index script. Uh, compliance runs this awesome thing uh, from Matt Foley, a developer down south in the States. Uh, called PR compliance action. That just makes sure that like pull requests have like a nice title and resolve an existing issue. Um, I have them ignore the team members like me and all contributors. Um, really nice action, just like nice housekeeping stuff. Um, KNIP is this awesome tool, um, which I'm gonna add now actually, PMPM add KNIP. Um, it checks for post this in the chat. It checks for unused files, dependencies, exports. So if I if I add a new package lint script, and I'm gonna make it oops, lint nip. I wonder if it'll work. Okay, yeah. So um <laughs> um it doesn't understand a lot of the stuff that I do. Oh God, I don't know that. I think NIP will need like an Astro integration. NIP uh, finds, I'm gonna paste in the chat for reference, finds unused files, dependencies and exports. Um, so I'm just gonna add a to-do notes file issue on NIP. I'm gonna um, delete the NIP one uh, and eventually re-enable. It's a great tool. I use it on other packages. I found so much debt code with it, but it doesn't understand everything. Like it has to, it has like integrations that let it understanding, like let it understand like different libraries, how they magically import stuff. Why am I using old YAML extensions? Am I using old YAML extensions? What am I doing wrong? Tell me, I'd love to know. Um, back under GitHub. Oh yeah, lint markdown. No, I'm gonna reopen the repo because it's useful just to see what all the different lint scripts are. Markdown lint, that's right. So PMPM add markdown lint and sentences per line. Let's go over that. Uh, so Markdown Lint is a nice little linter dedicated to linting Markdown. Eventually, 
Who is they, by the way? Dot YAML over YML. Like, if there's a reference here, I'd love to know. Like, to me, it's always been confusing that there's both YAML and YML. Um, but yeah, eventually Markdown Lint will probably be merged into ESLint in some way. Like, the new version, there's an even further out rewrite of ESLint. Um, oh my god. YAML itself recommends. That's so funny. YML. Where do they recommend this? Extensions? Hmm. Oh yeah, I always forget. It's an extension of JSON. Um, when did I start looking at YAML or YML? One from 2014. I want one that's recent. Well, ooh, does Wikipedia have an opinion? Ooh, since 2006? <laughs> Thank you. Also, look at the, oh my God, look at this website. Oof. So I'm gonna add this to my to-dos. I, I, I just, I'm just copy and pasting for now. Yeah. Well. LOL. Okay. Oh my God, forbidding tabs, but accessibility. Yeah, I, I've been doing this wrong too. All right, cool. So Markdown Lint is like a linter that eventually when ESLint is rewritten to support other things more, might be merged into ESLint itself. But for now, it's a good linter for Markdown files. Um, I also have, did I post something I did? I also have a nice little contributed rule for it called sentences per line that makes sure you use one sentence per line. So like in your readme, actually, let's see if markdown lint. Oh, right, it's pmpm add markdown lint CLI, separate, fine. I can set it saying JSON instead of just all. See if we have any complaints here with sentences per line. Like markdown lint will like complain if you mess up your headings or do other like weird bad practices or have like stylistic inconsistencies, which I really appreciate. And I worry that it's taking so long. That might be a sign of not ignoring the note modules. Okay, touch, mark down, lint, ignore, refactor. How about completely rewrite for that one? There we go. Um, don't need to exclude lib. I don't have a change log. I do have a code of conduct that I copy and pasted over. Here we go. And by default, I hate this markdown lint complains about line length. So I also create a markdown lint.json. <sighs> Which, um, here we go, does not, yeah, it, it doesn't, it disables any like rules that conflict with prettier. And then also I disable first line h1 and no line html because I end up those conflict with like fancy auto generated docs. But okay, uh, let's look at the readme. So this is who is they? Um, this is fascinating to me and hilarious. Um, I just ran like close to the default settings for Markdown Lint um, on the uh, that's just the standard Astro Starter Kit, and it found actual issues. Um, line three, fence code language. Fence code block should have a language specified. Yeah, it's better. If you put like shell or something, it gets better syntax highlighting. So I'm gonna file issues, issue on, mark, on Astro Generator about Markdown Lint's discovered issues. Cool. Oops. Why is that giving me complaints? Oh, I've messed up my uh, formatting elsewhere. That's fun. Oh, man. Somewhere I messed up formatting. Okay. All right. So shell, I just use like an explicit plain text uh, when it's plain text. 
uh, senses per line, 21. That's, I'm not gonna file an issue for that. That's just my personal preference. Oh yeah, to do notes, I'm just gonna switch this to a text file in the root. And on line, I'm just gonna switch this to captions. Okay. SH should be enough. Oh, that's right, I always forget this, SH. Is there technically a difference in syntax lighting between shell and sh? Either way. Anyway, LintMD is looking good. Ooh, yeah, do PRs. Definitely mention the context for why things are there. That's one thing I've learned the hard way. All right, uh, what else do we got here that I got enable, that I want to enable? Awesome, today I learned. Thank you, stupid learner. Again, proving your name to be only half accurate. You are a learner, but you're, <laughs> you're not stupid. Cracks me up. Okay, got a few more. Uh, package YAML and PMPM lint package. What does that do? And what does that do? Lint package. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got a separate linter. Again, something that should honestly just be moved into uh, ES lint, like as a plugin. A package JSON lint. NPM package. JSON lint, add npm package json lint, npm package json lint config default. Everyone has implemented their own linter, it seems. Uh, does it work using remark? No. So there is a set of plugin things for ESLint that I think do use remark. It's like this whole thing. And I can never get it to work, so I just gave up. <laughs> Change the name. Cool. But uh, yeah, I'll post the link to the package lint here. Pretty, oh, I haven't linted it, or started it, rather. Cool. Uh, no npm package lint configuration found. npm package. Yeah, this is why I want this, part of why I want this to be part of ESLint, or like a plugin for ESLint, dot npm package json lint rc dot json. What? Cool. And I know, I, truly, this is abnormal. Like I have so much more linting than the vast majority of projects do. I've never seen anyone use this many linters. I think we should use this many linters because they're useful, but also it's... It does make it a little less approachable for newcomers. So like, eh. But yeah, if you got the time and expertise to like set them up and then also help people use them, I think it's great. Yeah, I'm missing the description. Um, personal site for Josh Goldberg. Hooray! Sparkles. There is, oh, I've seen a project that does this. I forget where I saw it though. But yeah. Megalint. Rome, Rome is, Rome is taken on too much to, I think, focus on all these little linters. It's a pity. Oh yeah, license MIT. Do I have a license file? I don't, I should make a license file. License.md, license to code. Yeah, lint package. <sighs> cool. Yeah, Rome looks really interesting. Uh, we'll see how that goes. One of the problems with doing something like Roam, that's like, y'all just, for those who haven't looked at it, uh, unified dev tools, it does everything, um, is that things move really quickly. So by the time that they get like the current state done, there's going to be a whole other set of standards. So eh. who knows if it'll work, but I hope, I hope the best for them. Why are Astro and Nip squigglies? Great question. Let's move on to the next linter. A uh, lint. Oh, I, I'll 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 skip one to go to lint spelling. C spell. I have. A <laughs> it's always going to be that answer. Um, <laughs> C spell. Uh, great little. I think it's just the C spell dependency. Yeah. Add C spell. A, a spell checker for code. Let me add it here. Uh, dictionaries. 
where I want to see where the diction. Okay, so if you set up a cspell.json file, you can specify the dictionaries that it understands. So like I'm gonna add TypeScript, uh, Node, C, CSS, HTML. Uh, ooh, npm is a dictionary. I didn't know that. Cool. All right, pmpm lint spelling. I, I will again emphasize that I just really like linting and that's why that's why I do this so much. Most projects do not do this. Um, but there's a really nice uh, C spell extension for VS Code, which actually reminds me, I'm gonna copy and paste a lot of the extension recommendations from um, my template repo into here. And of course, sort alphabetically. Um, so like there's a C spell uh, extension and C spells config lets me ignore something. So this should be less complainy. So like I don't care about lib or coverage or change log. Cool. So I'm going to have words in here like uh, <laughs> Joshua K. Goldberg, me, Astro. Astro JS. Uh, ooh, I should ignore. Jeez, what is that? Dist. That's a folder to ignore. It's spelling. Does this do spelling on TS files? Yeah, it specifically checks like TS, JSON, and so on. It's a spell checker for code, which is really useful, honestly. Nip and Cobalt A and MDAST and Preact. Why is Preact here? I'm not using Preact. Oh, it's just docs that uh, they add. I don't need to know the project structure. I have access to the docs. Okay, so let's see what one's remaining. Look at this. Oh yeah, got some fonts. Demi, Nutra, Face, Joshi Poo, Swaggins, <laughs> class name. Auto fixer, alien. Oh, I'm gonna ignore to do notes. Cause that's just a to do file. Optimize legibility. That should be in the fonts or the CSS dictionary. To do file on C spell, CSS dictionary. All right, now we're talking. Now we got some. Uh, now we got some unknown words to deal with. These should all go in my dictionary. Cool. So I just know from the content of the post that uh, what the hell is chocolate doing here? Oh, it's a stop it. Ooh, it found a typo. Decision makers. Ha! Ah! C spell found a typo. Wait, decision. Oh, it's it's decision dash makers. Okay, that's fine. But wait, I swear, plat platformers. Oh, platformers. Where did this word come from? Platformers. Oh, it just doesn't know that platformers is a word. That's unfortunate. Run books. Man, I got all excited that it found an actual typo in my, my blog. Never mind. Uh, optimized legibility is CSS. Fun fact, it's a value for the text rendering property. Optimize. Oh my God. <laughs> it did find a typo, nice. I uh, did lowercase instead of uppercase. Very good, very good. Funny. So yeah, fun fact, there's actually a text rendering property now, similar to the old font smoothing one. All right, so learning TypeScript, that's definitely a word. And dog fooding, that's definitely a word. Cool. Unknown word, TS configs. Wait, what's this? Okay, extends astro TS configs. Dog booting is definitely a word. Their dictionary is wrong. 
Um, I don't. Is it in the dictionary? I gotta learn what linters are. Oh yeah, uh, great stuff. A, a linter is a tool that looks at your code and, and gives you information, often complaints about it without running it. It's like a really catch-all umbrella term. So like ESLint is the linter that people use most commonly to look at JavaScript code and yell when something seems wrong, like a likely bug. Um, dog fooding is, yeah, it's like, um, I always forget the exact story, but it means like using your own product. Like if you're Microsoft, if you work at Microsoft, you're going to use like Outlook and Teams and stuff like that, Windows. They dog food. Statically finds warnings without building them. Yep, that's a good way of looking at it. All right, progress. Also, is this sorted practically? NPM links. This file should, aha. So interesting, my ESLint extension didn't know to rerun ESLint when this file changed. And that's because VS Code's ESLint extension doesn't by default know that when a JSON file changes, it needs to rerun. So I'm, oh, interesting. ESLint.pro is set to JSON. I don't know why that's not working, but if I do dash dash fix, it should fix it. There we go. Cool. All right, one last linter. Uh, lint packages. So pmpm add pmpm deduplicates. So uh, it says it's deprecated, but the built-in pmpm dedupe command doesn't have like the nice output formatter that I like from this package. So um, it's possible to accidentally have multiple versions of the same package when you don't need to, like having 1.1.2 and 1.1.3. So this package will let you know, hey, you could, you know, deduplicate them in some nice way. So let's see if I have that. And when you say, what does that do? Which one are you refer referring to? Um, all right, so I've gotten, I don't need post-release. I don't need test. Uh, I don't need setup or release. I'm not releasing versions. Oh, PM, PM deduplicate. Oh, I forgot to post it. Could you fork it and try stuff? You, I would love it if you forked it and tried stuff. I'll just post my, just to be convenient, template type to go package. It's also got links to all the deduplication or like the linter and other actiony things it uses. Definitely try it out. Let me let me know if you find anything you like better. Um, so soon the built-in pmpm dedupe command that like ships with one that does this. For those who haven't used it, pmpm is like npm or yarn. Yarn is like npm, but it's much faster. So like if you if you have like multiple versions of like whatever this package is at core, it'll let you know like oh you could use one version instead of two. Really nice. Um, what else was I gonna do? Okay, so yeah, I've got, um, oh yeah, prettier. Do I have pmpm format command? Format. By the way, the fact that I've spent like, geez, like in 40 minutes, an hour, like however long on this is why I have this template package so that I can just copy and paste this stuff over. Stupid learner, that was you? Who were you in GitHub? Oh no. I, see, Ben, I, I take your compliment as a compliment. I think it's a compliment because it's a smile. I personally associate the phrase tech bro with like real negativity of like people who like are constantly talking about like protein and, and cryptocurrency and are real bro -y. So if someone told me that on the street, I'd take it as an insult, but I think that's not what you mean. So I'm gonna assume positivity. But thank you. If you mean like, oh my God, web three. Yeah. If you mean like a nice tech person, then thank you, I, I try. Um, oops, PM formats, PM, PM run formats. What, why is it? PM, PM add prettier, do I not have prettier as a dependency? 
Okay, PMPM run format. Oh, right. Thank you. Appreciate y'all saying that. Cool. So I just ran prettier. Prettier formats your code. You've been here the whole time? Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for hanging around. I really appreciate all your help. Bye. <laughs> of course. You're uh, a good a good individual. A good cookie. Yeah, if you make a linter, I'll probably use it. Enthu men who are enthusiastic about tech and each share the knowledge with the world and help others. Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. That's like that is what I'm trying to do. I think people like me who've gotten experience in the industry we and have had the privilege to do it happily and now have time, like we should share knowledge. It's both in our best interest to make a better tech industry around us and like morally the right thing to do. So yay. All right. So I've got all these linters and stuff configured. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, like six, five or six of them. I have a code of conduct that I added. Gotta have a code of conduct. I use the standard um, contributor covenant one. It's like a popular one. Um, I've got a contributing guide. Ooh. Um, gonna dot com next. I just realized I haven't checked my calendar. Am I missing any meetings? No, I got nothing else today. Okay, thank God. All right, yeah, a contributing guide is really nice and good for a project. Just, you know, tell people how to report an issue, how to send a pull request, like what to do. Um, so that's nice. Um, ooh, I don't have all contributors set up yet. I don't know that I want to, so I'm going to remove that. Development. Um, again, it's not template types with node package. It's Joshua K. Goldberg dot com next. Just boop. Find a replace there. Oh, how did I open a preview of MD? Uh, command K, command V. Or if you're using the command palette and don't know the shortcut, it's... Um, was it open preview? 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 There it is. Markdown open preview to the side. And then markdown preview. Oh, it's in the wrong tab. Markdown preview. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, friendship P preview. Yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. All right, so um, this is actually all mentioned in the readme. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Ooh, I like that. There's the emoji there. I might do that in my template. I'll think about it. Uh, uh, astro commands. Oh, this is an interesting little Astro thing. Uh, let me put this in the two notes. Astro commands say npm, not pmpm, even though the generator. Your workspace blocks GitHub? What on earth is happening? Why do they do that? And what do you mean by workspace? Like your work, like your job? Like wh why would they do that? Is it a security thing? Even though the generator knows I was using PMPM. Oh yeah, if you're not using the, um, the the VS Code preview, I really like Tempbar Markdown preview. Where is it? Oh no, wasn't there? Wasn't there like a really good? I thought the site was like. Oh no, Dillinger. That's the one I switched to. Dillinger is great as like a more fully fl secured. There you go. Dillinger is like a really good Markdown preview. Ah, except the build status is off. <laughs> okay. PM. Cool. So in the readme, I will say, um, F. Oh, the readme needs to be set up. Lordy. All right. Let me just copy my stuff over. Uh, joshuakgoldberg.com next. 
Oh, you max as a preview. Yo, Vim and Emacs have freaking everything. Those tools are great. Uh, sparkles. Cool. Um, let me. Uh, where is the development? All right, development. Okay, cool. Um, this is a very sparse readme. Um, P small align tools. Can I do this? Is the small tag supported? Uh, then I have to use an A, A tag, anchor. P around, center around the spot? Does that work? Cool. Oh, and codes, hello. Coming over from Chris Griffin, I, I'm guessing. I'm actually ramping down, uh, gonna be gonna be finishing up soon. I've been meaning to go eat lunch for like an hour now. I'm just setting up this repo and I forgot how much stuff there is to do. Uh, joshuakilber.com next. Things are all right, appreciate you coming over. Um, okay, so I got the development, how are you doing? Got the development scripts working. Uh, let's see, File Explorer. We have funding, so people know to give me money. Issue templates, cool. All right, yeah, I feel like this is good. Good commit and lots of linting. Wee. Hit push. Oh my God, there's, ooh, Laravel. I've never used Laravel, but I, I, I've heard it's fantastic, honestly. All right, the one last thing that I want to set up here is, um, I'll, you know, I'll just post the link to my site one last time, just to bump it in the chat. Um, cool. And it's got a red X on, who's complaining now? Ah, no PMPM version is specified. Package, package JSON. I need to say uh, package manager. What do I do in this thing? Package manager, PMPM. Ooh, and I also specify engines. Anything else here I should do? Okay, so yeah, I wanna set up uh, prettier also. Why not get a part-time job? Me? It's a waste of time. For me, it is a waste of time specifically. Other people, I'm sure it's useful and great. Um, I want to spend my time doing two things. Primarily, I want to work on open source full-time. Uh, that's my, my primary drive. I work on tooling that's legitimately useful to whatever, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of developers. Is that millions yet? Are there millions of us? I don't know. Um, <laughs> PHP 5. That's old. Um, so if I were to get a part-time job, I wouldn't have time for that. Also my second drive after that is like streaming and creating good content to teach people. Like that's useful. Um, so it's unfortunate, but it's just, if I, I've done contracting before, uh, it's just, it's useful in that it gets me money and exposure. Like I get to talk to people and learn things, but it's not time spent doing my primary drives, which are open source and teaching. Oh, well, anyway, Husky is a tool that sets up Git hooks for you. Uh, so Git hooks a little, the ability to run little scripts on certain Git actions, like making a commit. And lint staged is a tool that you can use to run uh, certain commands in your Git hooks on certain files. So like when I, here I'm saying lint stage any staged file in my git hook, I want to run prettier on it. And I'm gonna copy over my .husky directory. So, uh, .husky, so now I have a pre-commit hook that says run lint stage on my stage files. Cool. Git add all, git commit and add lint stage and husky. I think it should have 
Okay, here we go. When I run install, the prepare script knows to run husky. That's prepare husky install. So like, let's say that I like mess up the formatting for a file. Save that formatting. Hit add all, hit commit, and this shouldn't make a commit. No valid configuration found. Ah, oh, husky lint stage. Oh god. I always forget how to set these two up from scratch. Let's see, husky. Pre commit, lint stage. Oh god. Hmm. What is no? Oh, I forgot to put in a prettier config file. Okay, there we go. Prettier RC dot it's no extension, I guess. Okay. Oh, PN PX DLX. Uh, I forgot, I don't know. NPX works, so I'm just using it. <laughs> and then there's a prettier ignore file, which okay. The prettier ignore. I don't use all contributors in this repo, so I can just ignore npm lock. I also don't run tests or have like a built lib thing. All right, this should not format package or should not allow poorly formatted package JSON. So like it, the git hooks should run on that pretty RC in format right aha prettier plugin package json that's how i sort my package json i forgot oh my god and it's like literally right here in front of me cool so yeah um i use tabs now that there are only 10 people here instead of 20 i can really lay down the law and start the five retox um for accessibility i use tabs and then i also use this nice little plugin that sorts your package.json in this nice standard order you're planning on using holidays to teach rural kids JavaScript? That's awesome. What uh, what age range? And like, what situation is it like an after school program? I mean, depending on their age, code.org is fantastic. It tends to skew younger. Um, middle, I'm sorry, skew older. Older within children, code.org. If you go like really young, like elementary school, I've had good experiences, smart with Scratch from MIT. Um, it's been a while since I've done like elementary school education. I don't know if this is still the latest and greatest. Uh, does anyone here have any suggestions? Um, but no, those are all, those are great. So, okay, here we go. I get add all, get commit M for formatting, get push. No valid configuration, but what? <sighs> Format, right? Oh, are you asking for suggestions of how to like the find the teaching? Because in that case, yeah, plus one to Owen codes. Um, teaching code without internet access is hard. Not undoable. I actually used to help programs that teach in prisons, which is like a whole other thing. Um, now I'm getting annoyed about my husky hooks. Flat. But um, yeah, if you can go there in person and like bring Chromebooks, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, definitely partner with like schools or, or some such. You know what? I shouldn't even be doing this manually. Prettier has a website that um, includes docs on getting started automatically. There's like a nice install script about pre-commit hooks. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna run that see if it lets me. Um, two programs that are really great are Teals and Scripted. Unless they rename Scripted, I forget. Script at school teaching. Oh, what's the program? It's like the East Coast Teals. <sighs> Teals. Well, I forget the uh, East Coast equivalent, but West Coast has this program from Microsoft called Teals uh, that I've worked with before that like sends people to schools. It's, it's great. Um, it targeted well, first I started with schools near the Microsoft campus, but like they have a bunch of remote teaching 
and rural teaching and stuff. So like, uh, ooh, engage and teach them. Yeah, if you could like reach out to the, like if they have programming like computer science or developing teachers, them failing that schools tend to lump that in with like math or failing that arts. All right. Um, all right, you know what? This whole get hooks thing isn't working. So I'm just gonna mark that as a loss and uh, undo it. <laughs> and you know what? If it eventually, I'll, I'll do it as a to-do later on. Because I don't want to spend the time on this. So I'm just gonna delete all references to lit staged and husky YOLO. They hardly understand English. When you say rural, how rural are we talking here? And where are you? Uh, wait, is the program called Mom and Dad? Is that like a joke? Or is that like legitimately what the, the program was called? What language is that? Ooh. Oh, it's a joke. Okay, there we go. It's like, oh, that seems like an interesting program name. Ooh. Ah, India. In that case, I have no idea what uh, existing programs are there for you. I only know West Coast United States. Also, I, I did find them using formats. Cool. All right, so now my repo should be like pretty, pretty working. Let's see, oh, we got the red X. Reverse cell is complaining. Why are you mad? Oh, right, I need to npm install. Okay, whoops, didn't update the lock file. Push, clear. Um, but yeah, so actually finally answering, uh, if you're going to rural areas, or like an area you're not super familiar with to teach code, highly recommend lean on the shoulders of anyone you can, like refer, defer and refer to anyone who's done things already. Like they'll know better, whether it's teaching code specifically or just teaching the kids in general, they'll, they'll, you'll wanna go with them. And I should also run pmpm dev to make sure all my linting and formatting didn't break something. Yep, still works. Awesome. But cool, it's also time for me to go soon. I just wanna get the, the passing check mark. Oh no. Lint and D. Oh, I messed up my readme. I should have two lines on this one. Hooray. Violating my own rules. Hoisted on my own petard, as they say. And then prettier ignore. I added a prettier ignore. Uh, but yeah, uh, pmpm block.yaml. Get add. I'm just going to remove pmpm block.yaml. Bye, stupid learner. Have fun. Yeah, pmpm install. Get add all. Get commit and fix a couple of issues. Get push. See if anything else is complaining. Oh, spelling and lint. Who's complaining? Unknown word, package JSON. Oh my god. C spell, gotta add the package JSON. And what's the lint of complaining about? Oh, got a bunch of no one saves. Isn't that nice? Oh, you know what it is? So this is interesting. Type information is required for some of the more advanced lint rules in TypeScript PS lint. But in an Astro project, you need to build in order to um, get that stuff. So I'm betting pmpm astro sync is necessary. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I don't like to see those ennies. And it's saying this, uh, let's just go to an example file, blog entry list. It's saying it because the blog entry, the post is type collection entry, but collection entry comes from Astro content with it, which is auto-generated when you run Astro build things. So TypeScript doesn't know what type it is and therefore calls it any. So let's see if these actions are happy now. Also, did I deploy the new site? Yeah, look at that. Oh, love this, love this design, very pleased. All right. Wow, we uh, we made it, people. Two hours and 45 minutes. My 
Oh man, my back is popcorning. It literally sounds like popcorn. I'm gonna make myself an omelet. But this was a lovely time. Thank you all so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um, we should find someone to raid. Oh, I know exactly who we're gonna raid. Ola Soy Milk. Ramon is a wonderful individual. So before we raid, I'm gonna just post my information. No, you're awesome. Uh, thanks to socials. How did Ryan set up for me? There we go. Um, these are all my socials. I would love to connect with y'all on whatever things there are, like follow, subscribe, etc. Yay! I love how many people know Ramon. I wish, I truly wish I could say his name properly. I physically can't roll my R's. Both my parents could. Very upsetting. They didn't teach me jack squat. Um, but yeah, so just to summarize myself and what we did at the end, we were working on my new personal site, uh, which I just, yeah, I'll post it one more time. Uh, this repo has links to the deployed version and also to the Figma designs. Um, as it says here, I'm an open source, I am not, I am half Polish, half Ukrainian, but my mom speaks French because she grew up in Canada, in Montreal. They taught me none of those things. I have no connection to my heritage. And now you, Ukraine is like a whole thing that I, you know, <laughs> wish I was more connected to. Um, anyway, I, uh, I'm an open source maintainer of the TypeScript ecosystem. That means that I work on shared tooling, open source projects that folks who write JavaScript and TypeScript use. Sometimes I contribute to TypeScript itself, not as often as I'd like, but my main role is on TypeScript ESLint.io. Uh, this is the tooling that lets ESLint and Prettier support TypeScript. So this is super important stuff. Like many open source developers, I don't like get adequately paid for my efforts. And unlike many open source developers, I don't do this in my spare time for fun. I do this as my full-time day activity. So I don't have a day job. I don't get paid by a company. I don't have benefits. So I rely on sponsorship from like lovely people who sponsor TypeScript ESLint and lovely people who sponsor me. So I... If y'all are willing and able, I'd love it if you could just like give me like five bucks, 10 bucks a month. That would really help me keep doing these things. And info to do that is on my GitHub and on the site designs. Uh, but cool. Um, if you all wanna ever talk about like TypeScript or web dev or have any questions on that stuff, always happy to chat. Microsoft should sponsor me. That would be lovely. Once we're out of this recession, I'm gonna try. Uh, yeah, the TypeScript team has no budget for these things right now, unfortunately, and it's not up to them. And they are about as displeased as I am. Um, but yeah, I also wrote a book, Learning TypeScript, uh, which is my recommended book for learning TypeScript. So cool. Um, that's about it. Let's, ooh, my book. Cool, that's about it. Yeah, uh, gonna start the raid in 10 seconds. I don't have like a, outro screen or, or anything like that. So you're just gonna see what I see in my stream manager. But uh, this has been a lot of fun and I really appreciate you all. So thanks, bye. Bye Kevin. Love, love this infinite loop of screens.